Hi, I'm Lisa K. Donner, along with Andrew Moran, Sarah Cowgill, Jeff Charles, and Scott Cosenza. And this is the Conservative Five, Liberty Nation's online TV news program. On today's episode, Puppies, Pillows, and Parents, the Conservative Five take a disturbing look inside one research facility caught abusing over 4,000 beagles in a segment we call Who Let the Dogs Out? And we'll talk about what it's like for one friend of Donald Trump these days in My Pillow Man and the Missing Phone. And sometimes politics, well, they just make strange bedfellows, as you'll see in Muslim and Christian Parents Unite Against Grooming. Finally, we have a bit of goof off time and just for fun, volume 22, our spooktacular edition. All this and more coming up on this edition of The Conservative Five. It was a team effort comprised of organizations that might not normally register as friends or colleagues. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA, together with the Humane Society of the U.S., brought evidence of a sickening case of animal neglect and cruelty to the Department of Justice. The DOJ, which has been taking a lot of heat lately, done good with this one and put the punitive hammer down on Invigo, a medical research company in Cumberland, Virginia for breeding animals as guinea pigs to use for their medical testing and biomed products. Well, I gotta tell you, Sarah, this one literally made me nauseous when I saw what was going on with these beagles. You covered this story for LN this week. Um, Tell us a little bit about the background. Well, it's not unprecedented, nor is it unusual for companies um, or universities to breed animals for research purposes. The problem is with Envigo, they were violating um, the Animal Welfare Act that was put into place in 1966. So, um, and there's been a few revisions here and there over the years, but they were egregiously violating AWA um, and they got busted for it and they should have been busted for it. They found oh, I think a little over 4,000 beagles in horrific conditions. They um, they were on cold slabs, puppies on cold slabs, uh, nursing moms that had not been fed for days, feces and food. They were in cages that they, that, that they couldn't stand up and turn around in. There's a litany of horrifying things that went on at this facility and I don't know what the whistleblower was or who the whistleblower was, but I'm going to give Peter credit for jumping in on this one and just running it to the ground and taking the enough evidence and disturbing evidence um, to the department of justice and credit to the department of justice. They said, yeah, this isn't going to happen. So, you know, it it was kind of a, it was kind of a, a warm and fuzzy feeling. Now, There's 4,000 beagles and Vigo beagles all over the United States finding new life. You know, they'd never touched grass. They'd never had a human hand. They never had a name. It was, you know, it's just something that, you know, it should happen more often because a lot of these cases go unnoticed. I must admit, I'm a big dog lover. And Scott, I know you are too. But when I see practices like this, you know, sheer abuse, you know, ears cut off and tails rotted and all manner of stuff. Um, this is just, this is just not right. I'm wondering where the Virginia authorities were uh, in this. It's a violation of state law, I think, to abuse animals in this fashion. They've got their jackboot on my neck to pay them these confiscatory tax rates to fund <laughs> these uh, police officers and their defined benefit pensions. So that after they work for 16 years, they can go live on a beach in Boca. Why I have to still pay for them. <laughs> and yet they're doing nothing for the. And don't forget, you to, now to, can pay to, for their, you can regulate pay for their the school dogs. loans. You can pay Meanwhile, for their school loans. I'm going to be in the position of lauding PETA. I, you know, I don't like any of this. Uh, it's all bad news. They say that uh, Hitler was nice to his dog, Blondie, famously, but uh, he was still Hitler and PETA. Uh, while I'm happy that they engaged in this action that prevented this further abuse from dogs, while not quite Hitler, are detestable uh, a detestable group, and uh, I refuse to celebrate them in any in any fashion. 
And uh, I love dogs as much as, as you well know, anybody else. <laughs> Jeff, your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, as somebody who loves dogs and dogs love me, I mean, I had two dogs when I was a kid and I, I love them. I mean, I'm telling you, dogs love me. If I remember around your dog, they will fall in love with me. It just, it just happens. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> but, falls in love with Jeff. Well, no why, is that? why is that? You know, I really don't know. They, they, they just like me. They, they, they do. Smells good. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's the smell. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, as far as this whole thing coming to life from what I read, there was a situation where a guy, uh, I don't know how he found out that this stuff was going on, but he flew a drone over the facility and took footage of it. Then I, I read that somebody hired a, um, um, a private investigator to go get a job there pretending to be an employee, but really they were trying to, to figure out what was going on right, right. at this facility. And they found out that they were not giving these canines the appropriate level of care. And I will say that this is a broken clock moment for the Department of Justice, which, which took a break from pretending that white supremacy is a dire threat to national security to actually deal with this issue and also pete in the other organizations as well. I mean, I may not agree with them on other stuff, but I'll, I'll give them this one. Broken clocks, all right, twice, twice a day. <laughs> Andrew, now you're a cat guy, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've cat. Uh, God bless you, Max. My cat passed away, so like the my heart felt to him. Okay, so here's my question though. Okay, I, I completely condemn this. I don't want any animal research. I, I can't stand these practices. Here's my question: Why is there such condemnation for research on dogs, but not so much for the consumption of animals? We don't want little fighter oh, to get tortured. Oh, here we go with the vegan thing. We don't right. want we don't want little fighter to get tortured by these cruel beings. But what about the pigs who are mutilated so people can have their bacon? What well, about well, calves well, who are separated from their moms uh, for dairy They're production? not mutilated what while the pigs are alive, What about all the torture Andrew? that these animals go through and their lives are lost and they're confined to these horrific conditions just so we can satisfy our plates? So so someone explain the difference to me on that one. Well, Scott, I, I, I agree. Andrew, I, agree. I, I Honestly, Andrew, I'm kind of with you on that. I, I don't want to – I am not a, a vegan whatsoever. Um I wish I had the discipline to do it, but I'm not. And uh, there's there's just a distinct difference to hunt for food. And there are regulations in place that are obviously overlooked um, for, I mean, just check out the PETA site. I'm sure you have checked out the PETA site. You're probably a card carrying member of PETA. Oh. And and I'm, I'm good with that because I think if you, I, I did a lot of research into, into what they do and what they're talking about. And they say, hey, we don't we don't like the fact that you guys eat animals if you eat animals. But here's you know, here's what regulations need to be put into place so that those animals before they are um, on the table have a quality of life. And it, that's not happening. It's it's the not quality of life before they are on your dinner plate. And that's my biggest. Let me say problem. that Andrew is a vegan and we we very much care for him anyway and accept him. But that that's uh, that's a reality that we all deal with, and that there is zero tension between consuming the flesh of animals and treating animals humanely. Literally zero. Uh, th those two things can be accomplished one with one hundred percent, you know, uh, fidelity to both to both things. Uh, it just costs a little bit more and creates a little bit more effort on behalf of the producer and the consumer. So and you're absolutely Andrew, right, Scott. But the problem is everybody wants to take the shortcut. They don't care. They want the bottom line. And so that's why I'm bully for Peter right now. I know well, not everybody. Uh, I have the free range eggs right there in the fridge a couple paces away from me. So there's um, a whole movement. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's, but, there's a whole movement against this stuff. So, I mean, I agree. I mean, I am the furthest thing from a vegan, but it is wrong how a lot of these am animals are treated. But there are a lot of restaurants who make sure that they source their meats, like Chipotle, they source their meats from more humane uh, uh, people who, who breed them. And I think that th that movement has been growing, but I do agree that that is a problem. We should not be treating animals this way. But the problem with, let's say, let's use Scott's example as free range. Th that whole thing is a scam in itself. When you talk about free range eggs, what all they do, these farmers or, or, or agricultural industry, is that they have a little door of, across from the barn and then they walk outside. And then that's how they classify free range. So you, have, you can have all these regulations you want, all these marketing gimmicks you want. No matter what, you are taking innocent lives and, and in a lot of cases, you know, destroying these animals and, and you know, crushing their spirits. And then, you know, it's funny too. 
actually, if you, if you want to talk about the science and the science loves doing animal research and they'll defend it and they'll spend billions of dollars of taxpayer money on this issue. But if you look at the science, you see that a lot of uh, the animals who are tortured, you know, they, that goes into the meat. You're consuming that, that, that misery that they had to go through in their final hours. You know, you, the, you, I think there was a, a study comparing the milk of, of uh, animals who are on these, you know, humane farms compared to the milk source on these, on these tortures. And there's such a huge uh, contrast in terms of uh, nutrition and the taste itself. So, so overall, this is a perfect opportunity for the marketplace to enter and say, we have a better egg that doesn't have the torture hormones in it. And you're right about the free range thing. They're, they're actually pasture raised. So basically you go to the egg aisle and you just buy the most expensive eggs you can get or near them. And that's <laughs> or you, how you, or you go down the road the a right quarter one. of a mile and they have chickens and they have eggs for sale. And, well, that too. And yeah. so you know where you're getting your product. Andrew, you managed to torque this entire conversation over toward uh, the whole vegan battle. When this is supposed mm -hmm. to be a feel good segment about some nice puppies getting freed from uh you know torture and jail but anyway it seems that the light has been shined on this horrifying practice in a very big way and now as you all say the world is watching what's next the my pillow guy mike lindell knows that being a friend of donald trump comes with a whole host of sticky problems most recently mr lindell is trying to persuade the doj to give him back his cell phone as if it wasn't embarrassing enough, the FBI cornered Lindell and demanded he surrender his phone at a fast food drive through He did give up the phone. But now constitutional law expert Alan Dershowitz has accused the Biden bunch of violating Lindell's constitutional rights, specifically his fifth, first, fourth, and sixth amendments. I think I got those all out. Hence the legal wrangling. Scott you're our only Esquire. What's the legal scoop here? Well, Lisa, they took the phone pursuant to a search warrant. Uh, so they had the legal right to take the phone at the time they did. But Lindell says, uh, and his legal team, uh, including Alan Dersh, would say that both the scope of the warrant, which basically allows them to uh, look through anything that they can discover on the device, including years prior to any investigation they may be uh, undertaking, uh, violates his rights. And also, how did they find him? Lindell left his house at 4 a.m., went on a duck hunting trip. When he was returning home, stopping at a Hardee's drive through they converged on him with three unmarked cars. He thought he was being, you know, hijacked or something like that. The FBI came after me and took my phone. They surrounded me at a Hardee's and uh, <laughs> took my phone. I ran all my business, everything with. Um... And so how did they know where he was if they weren't tracking him via his phone without a warrant? Uh, violating his right to be free from uh, <laughs> tracking. Uh, well, that gray government. area, Scott, that's a gray area. Well, that's what it's not a gray area, according to Alan Dershowitz. I can tell you <laughs> that much. Uh, <laughs> so uh, why do they have to be so showy and so embarrassing? I mean, everything has got to be a big show to this just Justice Department. Oh, well, you may have stumbled on the, that. That's the point, baby. Right? The the it's not the the process is the punishment. So, with if you're Roger Stone and you have a pre dawn raid with CNN amassed outside your door, for instance, or if you're set upon by three unmarked cars at a Hardy's drive through, instead of just you know knocking on your door or calling your lawyer and saying we have this, we need this surrendered in an hour, you know, something like that, that it could all take place in a sort of more civilized fashion. That's all why right. the perception is. That this is a war against Trump loyalists and not well, just regular law enforcement. Or if you're Steve Bannon, you, 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 you have that perp walk that you had a couple weeks ago. It's not like well, we'll get into the legal stuff in a little bit, but Jeff, I don't know, maybe it's me. Am I out of it? What what is my pillow guy? What what's the interest in the my pillow guy? Um, Orange man bad. Scott hit it on the head. This is a whole thing against allies of Trump. You know, I want to add one more point, which is that if the FBI uh observes two people breaking a law and doesn't pursue the, that law breaking against one of the, the persons and then uses every resource with helicopters and gunships and satellites to pursue uh, the breaking of the law with the other person. And that and, and, and the difference between the way they're treated is motivated by who they're friends with or who they voted for or who they donated donated to is total corruption, even if the person actually broke the law. Right. So if I drive 56 miles an hour on the highway and it's a 55 mile an hour limit. And I'm the only one that gets a ticket because I've got a bumper sticker on my car that says MAGA. Well, that, that's corruption, even though I did break the law.
Nobody has answered my question. What does the my <laughs> pillow guy have to do with anything? Is he's friends with Trump? Simply can... a friend of Trump. Yeah. And any hope any high profile friend of the former president is going to be filleted so that other people say, oh, well, I don't want to be in that position. I can tell you that it has. Who knows if he's done anything wrong? He's probably done some wrong. This latest thing has something to do with Dominion voting systems, according to the FBI. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now we're getting uh, down to it. Okay. Now we're getting down to the Dominion voting system issue. So that is really what they're after to see how organize or see what Mr. Pillow has to do with. Here, here's something else I have to mention, Lisa, which is that the FBI has the capacity to take somebody's phone and make an image uh, of that device and take down all the data and yet let them retain the device and the image uh, and their phone for their own use. Uh, Lindell says he runs his five, I think it's five businesses uh, out of his phone. He doesn't use a regular computer like I'm talking to you on now or a laptop. He just uses that phone. And part of what he's saying is not even, you know, one of the arguments is they shouldn't have taken, uh, shouldn't have executed the warrant at all because of its breadth. But another one is, please just give me back my phone. You've already got what you want, this data, the text messages, whatever else it is. But let him have the phone so he can run his business. That's part of the reason why, again, another so kind of match stick on the pile is being They're just They're trying a to make him go broke, grind him down. Exactly. Well, did they have their day in court? And what happened? They have had their day in court, and uh, as I checked, uh, most recently the judge has yet to rule on uh, his request to have the phone returned. Well, I guess the plot thickens with my pillow. Thanks very much, panel, and thank you all for tuning in. Hundreds of parents in Dearborn, Michigan, recently flocked to a school board meeting to protest books in their children's schools that contain sexually explicit content. Normally, the activist media would portray the protesters as intolerant white supremacists. But there's one problem. These were Muslim parents. I guess we can file this story under reports the left would rather you do not see, which is why here at Liberty Nation, we just had to cover it. Jeff, this is an interesting piece for you to tackle this week, um, and you did. Tell us the details, and I will say it's quite popular piece on our site. Yeah, it's very interesting, but not surprising. I was waiting for a story like this to blow up because the progressives want, want you to think that it's just white Christians who are against a lot of this stuff that's going on in schools. Mm-mm. Muslims aren't down with it either. I mean, and Muslims have been speaking out about this in the past, but this story blew up because of the size of the protests. And, and at, the, at their mosque, their um, imam was actually encouraging people to go to this protest. So they joined with Christians to come against a lot of this material that's being found in elementary schools, junior high, high schools that are accessible to kids. And in a lot of cases, teachers are actually teaching a lot of these um, issues issues, and, 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 and preaching the, this, this ideology related to gender identity, to sexuality. And it's just, it's completely inappropriate. And this is why this whole thing has been such an issue over the past two years. It's not going away. And and if and if we see more Muslims and more even people of color, Christians, Muslim or what have you, black people aren't aren't down with this stuff either. Nobody likes this, including people who vote Democrat. And the reason why the activist media won't cover it is because they're trying to still paint the picture that this isn't really an issue. Sarah, you look at the politics of a lot of stuff. Are we looking at a possible serious voting block in the future, which is the Muslims and the Christians in the same kind of you know, against all this sexuality in schools? Well, I'd, I'd like to think that would be on the horizon. Um, but again, they're getting their news and their views from a lot of different sources that, you know, aren't maybe conservative. Let's put it that way. So I, I don't I don't see this as a coming together. But, you know, politics makes strange bedfellows, perhaps. This is going to be the the one issue that that brings a divided um, America, especially when it comes to Muslims, Muslims and and Christian folks, you know, towards understanding one another a little a little better. I mean, you can't you can't go around saying, well, those Muslim parents, you know, they're just allowing their kids to be groomed. You can't say that anymore. So I can't can't imagine I I think maybe the perception might be changed. That would be helpful. I can't well, and just a little tidbit here in that county, that county went over 90 percent for Biden. 
So this isn't even a political thing. I think most people know that Muslims in general, they have more traditional values, just like Christians do. They're not going to be okay with them trying to groom their kids and try to introduce this material. They're even more, more strident about it than a lot of Christians are. The public right. schools were invented in this country to separate children from their families and the imposition of their family values on those children so that the state could impose its own values on those kids. It's acting perfectly as designed and then later as a great jobs program and daycare program until we there a mission this statement on that somewhere that I missed from government and free it that that's we're always going to have these sorts of things I, I just that's the answer it's so clear to me I, yep. I, I Andrew, Scott are is you a gonna, thousand you, percent right on that are you going to make the uh, case for private school Andrew now well, yeah, of course. I mean, our kids are in private school and we just love it. You know what? We're not uh, indoctrinated to this stuff. A few years ago in Ontario, uh, Kathleen Wynn, she was uh, the first uh, lesbian premier of the province. And she she overhauled the sex ed program and she introduced all these controversial subjects. And the media right away said, all oh, these white uh, conservatives are protesting. But if you went to the if you went to the education meetings, if you went to these town halls, it was pretty diverse. You had a lot of Muslims, you had Chinese, you had Koreans, South Asians. So all it was pretty diverse of the opposition to the whole sex ed they got voted out conservatives came over they overhauled the education system but not the sex ed they just you know focus on math and accounting all that stuff but it's funny too the other day um i asked my wife you know oh you know, I remember when the left was so obsessed with Muslims. You know, the, 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 the Muslims were the victims. So now I'm thinking that after the, after this scenario, you know, the, on the whole victim pyramid, the Muslims are going to be really down near the bottom toward white males. So I think so. This thing is really uh, the left now at war with Islam. Yeah, they, have they dropped below the Native Americans now as the yeah, least yeah, exactly. amount of victims? <laughs> Well, as you say, politics makes strange bedfellows. United for the common good? We'll have to see. No wonder the left is reeling. Thanks, panel. Halloween is just around the corner, and it could prove to be a spooktacular event on what we're calling Just for Fun. Okay, so here's what our panel is going to do. I'm going to give them a setup and they decide who they're going to go as for Halloween. You ready, everybody? Ready. Ready as I'm going to be. Ready. <laughs> ready, confused. Okay, here we oh, go. I'm not oh. ready. Don't be confused yet. You haven't even got the rules. We've all been invited to a Halloween bash. Your hosts are Donald and Melania Trump. They like retro Saturday morning cartoons, but you can come as whoever you so like. Wow, what a rush. Jeff, who are you coming as to the Donald and Melania Trump bash at Mar-a-Lago? It would have to be me in an entourage. And my entourage would be a soul band playing the theme from John Schaff, because that's who I would go as, John Schaff, because I'm a bad mother. You know, they say that Cat Schaff is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. mouth. Jeff, are you trying to get me you're, in trouble? You're trying to get us banned from YouTube. Uh, you're you're doing a damn good job of it, too. But, but, but I'm talking about Shaq. I thought you were going to say you're going to have a big entourage and go as Kanye West. Oh, no, 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 no. Because that would get you in a lot more trouble. <laughs> All right. Next, Scott. Who before are you going I, as? In before the- I give my answer, I have to make a public service announcement, Lisa. <laughs> This is to counter all the other public service announcements that Americans will get about their neighbors trying to poison their kids' candy or put razor blades in it or or give away free drugs. uh, As Wait a minute, wait a minute. New York cops pulled over a whole bunch of fentanyl in Skittles and other kinds of things. Yeah, but they weren't giving that away to children. That was for sale for people who are are buyers. This whole idea that your neighbors are trying to kill you is this scare thing that like... Local media stations got into because this got is a funny clips. segment. Stop it! I will it, stop say, it, stop I will it. say, no, but they are trying to kill you. I've seen all the chemicals in the candy. It's just outrageous. So yeah, they are trying to kill you. Oh, and it it also Scott Moran are going to show up to the party as wet blankets. That's what they're going to show. Up. <laughs> all right, I'm going. I'm going straight to Sarah. Sarah, I'm going to go with Steve Bannon. Steve <laughs> Bannon, why? You want to get extra cocktails? I just think I can make it work. You know what I mean? I could. That somehow I could actually pass as him. You know. Okay, I, I'm. I'm going to bear it all and tell tell everyone that one year Scott came as a Supreme Court justice, and it was about the funniest thing we've ever seen. Sarah, do you what? want to tell? 
Uh, it was pretty funny. Ruth Bader Ginsburg arrived at the uh, Halloween party in Virginia, and I it think was uh, unforgettable. I think, unforgettable. I think Mr. Donner and I were so taken aback we couldn't hardly contain our uh, hysterical laughter. Scott is Ruth Bader Ginsburg is one for the ages. Okay, it is. Andrew, what are you going to come as? Uh, I know it's pretty boring and conventional, but uh, I would go as. Um, Bella Lugosi's Dracula. I would say, uh, my name is Dracula. <laughs> Listen to the children of the night. What music they make. <laughs> Dear God, you'd have to keep that up all night. So, so somewhere in there, I know there's a Liz Cheney lurking. But all right, go, <laughs> go, go, do go ahead, Sarah. Night. What what are you going to come? At? I, I'm going to stick to the theme because it's Donald Trump and Melania, and they they like '70s cartoons. And so I'm going to please them so that I'm the favorite guest to maybe win the costume contest. So I am going to be, it's a toss up between Super Chicken and Scooby-Doo. I don't know who Super Chicken is. Does anybody know who Super Chicken is? Oh my God, he was a, he was a superhero. He was a 70s superhero. Okay, that's three chicken. others. That's it. Scott, no. do you know Super Chicken? Never heard of it. There was one thing you should learn when there was no one else to turn to call a Super Chicken. <laughs> Andrew, I, th- I think Sarah made that up. I think you made. I think you know what? I think you people are all fired from my show. I know we're commies because we don't know who Super like Chicken that. is. Yeah, but I would say Sarah looks more like Electra Girl, or Electra Woman. That's an old '70s superhero cart, uh, superhero show. It was uh, Electra, now Girl, I know you're Electra Woman and Dina Girl. So I think Sarah. I don't should know who like that is. Chicken. All right, I'm going next, and I'm going to stay with the cartoon thing. I want to go as Natasha from Bullwinkle. I always wanted to be. Oh. He was thin and sexy and she had a oh, long just... cigarette uh, holder. And I love Natasha. Oh, my God. I, I, I just Natasha, like Bullwinkle. Sometimes they make me so mad, moose and squirrel. Oh, we could do a group thing with that, Lisa. We could do, I mean, Tim could be Boris. I could be the moose. Scott could be the squirrel. It's all good. We'd have a but, well, Who were you just being, time. Jeff? Who were you just being? The moose or... Boris. Oh, Boris, Boris. Oh, he's hunting down moose and squirrel. Can Does I say he... one thing? Can I interject for one moment? No, no. I you know are you upset us with being my bit vegan of stuff. What? <laughs> what? Andrew, you got to stop because I'm I'm seriously going to fire you. In You're... Mother Russia, in places <laughs> <to> you. <laughs> is, is that Winkle or is that Putin? I don't know. Anyway, double, double. Boris. Boris. Double, double toil and trouble. Will you end up in the C5 cauldron? We are. We hope you enjoyed this segment. We're all confused and we're going to beat down on Boris right now. Bye. That's it for our Conservative 5 panel today. Check out our other C5 shows and segments on your favorite video platform, YouTube, Vimeo, Rumble. We're on them all. As well, Liberty Nation has its own Roku channel where you can see all of our TV productions. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, surf on over to LibertyNation.com. Special thanks to our fantastic editor and post coordinator, Frank DiOrio, and our executive producer, Sarah Calgill. I'm Lisa K. Donner, Editor-in-Chief. Thanks for joining us today. This has been a production of LibertyNation.com, where truth is making a comeback. <laughs>